audit at the Nevada Department of Welfare and Social Services in Reno, Nevada. Today is August 5th and it's a little bit after 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday. So let's see how things go. No weapons. Past 107 arguments. Hi there. How are you? Need some assistance? Oh, no, I'm just looking around, seeing what they do here. Snap. Some applications, SNAP, change report form. In case you're making a video of that or something, you can't uh, you can't run the the uh, cell phones in here. Oh, just let me know. I'm just taking a video, man. I know you can't do that. Anymore. You can't take a video in here. No, because you can't use the cell phone. Is that a law? Yes, yeah, it's right there. Oh, so I can't use my video camera and my cell phone as far as to. Take a video to document what's happening in a state building? As far as I know, it says no cell phone use. Yeah, I think that that's an illegal sign then. Well, I don't know. As far as that, this goes. You can't use it in here, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to stop. No. Okay, well. Okay. Thank you. What's your name? My name's Randall. Randall, my name is Drew. Yeah, so he thinks. That sign says I can't record. I disagree. Oh, food or beverage. Cell phone use in this building. No food or beverages. Pursuant to Nevada Revised Statutes 199 300, a person who directly or indirectly addresses any threat or intimidation to a public employee with the intent to induce him, contrary to his duty to do, make, omit, or delay any act, decision, or debt. Termination shall be punished if physically force, if physical force or the immediate threat of physical force is used in the course of intimidation the making of one threat. If no physical force or immediate threat of physical force is used in the course of the intimidation or the making of the threat for gross death, we will prosecute to the fullest extent. No firearms allowed in this building. You can register to vote here. That's D. It's got a lock on it, so we won't try that. Sir, you can't record in here. I can't? Why not? Why are you recording here, sir? Just to document things. I understand, sir, but these are um, people we want to protect their privacy, so I would just ask that you turn that off. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. Is this a public space? It is a government building. With publicly accessible spaces, right? Yes. So, and I'm in a publicly accessible space? I would say yes, but you are in a government building, and again, okay. we want to keep the confidentiality and privacy. Uh, I, I, I appreciate your concerns, mm -hmm. um, but what I'm doing is a constitutionally protected activity. 
So under the First Amendment, you've got freedom of the press, right? Um, not in here right now, sir. Yeah. I'm going to ask you to turn off your I'm, phone. I'm not going to. Medicare Part D help available. Oh, discrimination complaint process. Justice for all. A new way to pay child support. What's this new way to pay child support? Now there is the biggest scam there is child support. Federal government pays the states to collect the money and they keep a bunch of the money and get tax dollars back. Sir, you cannot film in this. Hi, what's this your name? Building. My name is Sarah Hunt. Hi, Sarah. I'm a supervisor here. Uh, you um, cannot film in here. All of our customers are protected by confidentiality. Okay. You cannot film in this space. If you do, I'm going to have to call Capitol Police and have you okay. removed. You cannot and be you'll, filming in here. Um, if, you if, you, if you feel a need to call the police, we you can, can do so. We can have this conversation outside, um, but you cannot continue to film in here. No, I'm going to exercise my rights. Bobby, go call Capitol Police. Okay. I'm not interfering with anybody. What is I'm the not... reason that this is happening, may I ask please? Um, that's actually a very detailed conversation. It took a while to have. But long and short, what I'm doing is what's called a First Amendment audit. First Amendment audit. First Amendment audit. And what I'm doing is filming anything that's visible in a publicly accessible space of a public building. Okay. And that's a protected activity within the Constitution. So, you, so that's what I'm doing. You are able to be in here, but they are protected by confidentiality in this building. Well, the, their the, identities and their them coming here, mm -hmm. they are protected. The people that we serve have a right to have their confidentiality and to oh. have their identity protected. Oh, I appreciate that, I, and I 100% agree with you. Um, but let me ask. I, I I approach life with questions and based on the law, and and so how I'm approaching this is. Um, have the courts ruled that you and I, or all of these other human beings here, have a right to privacy in public? Or have they ruled that there is no right to privacy in so, public? But this is a building where they're applying for public assistance, and they are there. Right, but within a public space, is it the burden upon you to create a private space if privacy is required to protect that information? Okay, so as far as filming, because we can't control what you're going to do with that. Oh, not at all. Just like, uh, you know, you, I can't control what the government does with all the cameras it controls. It's not for you to control my camera. Is there a reason that you are in our office today? Are you one of our customers? Or is there some... some no, I, I, I had no idea what you did. Provide to you today? I, I had no idea what you did. And why I came in here is because I didn't know. I've never, thankfully, needed services. But I was curious as to what you had in here. And so what you'll notice I'm looking at is your paperwork. If I focus, other than the people that engage me, if I focused on a single person. So, and I, I can appreciate that. And so, I am happy to help you with information on any of our services, any of that. What I am most concerned about is anybody's face showing in this. Right. You know, it's their, it's their dignity, it's yeah. their pride, it's their ability to pursue these benefits without having their the concern that their you know the employers would know that people that they you know that they should be able to pursue public assistance without having that it's for example if you were to go into a doctor's office and that, start telling everybody I mean it's it's yeah that that's that's a that's a private building and a private business versus a public a public building where taxpayer funds are used so, so there's there's a big difference between the two. On private property, I, I would not do this. In, I would not come to your home. I would not enter your driveway. The, the, the only thing I could do is if you've got a sidewalk stand on, on the public sidewalk and film things. So my purpose in doing that is to exercise my constitutional rights, both for you and for me and for every person in here, because if we don't exercise our rights and the government takes them, we don't have our rights. So I, I appreciate your concerns about keeping these people's privacy. That, that's a very important thing. Um, one of the things that I would suggest, though, is because since I'm standing right over here, I don't have very good eyes, that's a fortunate thing, but you guys might want to put blinders on all your computer screens because people sitting right there or sitting over there, would you agree I'm being very obvious with what I'm, whoops, with what I'm doing? Uh, yes. I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to hide it even, and that's purposeful. But if somebody did have nefarious intentions, they've got sunglasses with cameras in them now, right? Have you seen those? Um, or they've got all other kinds of cameras. So if they're in here, 
and they're filming your computer screens, which I can clearly see. This can probably clearly see it too. And I'm not going to do anything with, that's not my intention here at all. But if you do have people come in with hidden cameras that do want to get this information, that would be a bad thing, wouldn't it? No, I, of course. I, I absolutely understand that. I hear that. Let me get out of your way then. So, so part of what I'm doing in, in my, my process here, I'll move away so I'm not looking at, the, 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 I'm not looking at their, their screens because that's not my intention again. Um, but my purpose in doing this is I walk in and I'm going, okay, you've got a concern for privacy. You can't stop a legally constitutionally protected activity. But what you can stop is somebody that has a nefarious purpose from coming in and getting that computer information. So those are things you can do. So I, I try to point things like that out. I, I try to look at the forms, and that, that's what I try to do. But basically what I'm doing is exercising my legal rights right now. So, and, you know, my intention is never to get in the way of somebody being able to, you know, say what's on their mind, exercise their rights. My husband is very much of a similar mindset, you know, as, as someone who should be able to, to exercise his rights. As a supervisor here, my primary goal is to protect the people. Oh, I, and, and, and I appreciate that. Rights aside, they are very uncomfortable that they are, that there is someone in here and filming them and they're uncertain. We just had someone the other day who didn't even, you know, was uncomfortable with even the verification with employers because having someone know well, that they're in applying for public assistance, unfortunately. I got it. I've got compassion for these people. I, I, I have a business. Um, one of my guys is a veteran. He's lost his house. He's lost his leg and he's sleeping in the couch in my office. I get it. People are struggling. It's horrible. People aren't here because they want to be here. And I appreciate the compassion you're demonstrating for this. I, I really do. And I'm not trying to be a, a jerk to these people. I'm trying to just, like I said, I'm exercising a constitutionally protected right. So above laws, above everything else, because, and the reason I do this is because I've had issues with government where they're infringing on my rights. Um, I've been a state lobbyist. I, I've got laws changed at the legislature. I've done things in my life to try to make it a better system. This is just one of my ways to try to do that. So hopefully I'm educating you, you're educating me a little bit, having a good exchange. And I'm, I'm blessed in that I don't need your services right now. Hopefully I never do. Uh, but on the other hand, all these other people that are in here also have all these same rights. And if we don't exercise the rights, again, what happens? To, what, what have you seen over the course of your life? Have our rights gotten freer in our country? We could have a very long debate. We, 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 we could, and we probably topic. both have the same answer. So, uh, we, we haven't become more free. It, we've become more stifled by more laws, more regulations, more things that trample upon us. And, and so those are the things that I'm speaking out against, along with educating about the Constitution and what our rights are. And so that's why I stand my ground when I have to. And when I decide to walk away, then I will walk away. On the other hand, it's a Friday afternoon. It's probably getting close to 5 o'clock. And when you guys close, I'm going to leave willingly then, too. And what was your name, sir? My name is Drew. Drew? Yes. Sir, yeah. nice to so. so, Drew, you know, my thought is to, again, having a husband, that we have these debates often. Um, I can understand your desire to want to exercise your right. And um, I'm sure pushback against that is all the more reason to try to dig in. And exactly. And at the same time, you feel strongly that you are um, doing this for other people that are here, right? If the people that are in here, just even when I was coming out, people were expressing, um, I'm just saying, if the people that are in here are expressing that they don't wish this to be happening, and you've come in and you have filmed and we've had a conversation, at what point can there be a meet in the middle where we can disengage the filming you know, have conversation when, and still respect what they want while they're here. When I do this, I, I, I will not disengage filming at all. That's part of part of what I do is to make sure I document 100% of it. And I do that for a couple of reasons. Um, number one, self-protection. Because if this stays on, what I said, what you said, what anybody said in here, what anybody did, there, there is no question. This this won't lie. Uh, and, and, and I'm certain you've, you've had life experiences, as I have, where... People don't remember things quite the same way that you might do. I wish that my husband and my arguments are were filmed all the time. So that see, there was see, 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 so evidence uh, of uh, exactly uh, what I happened. I might be speaking to the choir. Right. Uh, again, I'm not using anything for nefarious purposes. I'm not trying to shame anybody. If if one of these people comes up and politely says, "Hey, could you make sure that I don't show up?" I will edit them out before I post anything. Uh, like I said, not not trying to be a jerk. On the other hand, if they come up to me and they're very in my face. 
I guarantee they're going to get on. They're going to get posted. Um, treat people kindly. Do the right thing. And I appreciate people's. I think the word here. I've I've experienced great shame in my life. Don't know if you've ever experienced great shame. Shame is a very powerful emotion. I'm a Catholic family and oh, oh, good. shame pretty well. Oh, oh good, good, good. <laughs> so, so, so uh, although I, I wouldn't put it on any of these human beings in here because I've, I've experienced my own things that have been bad, I'm sure that some of them feel some sense of that emotion within them for having to be here. And, and I don't want to make that worse for them, right. but at the same time, their feelings feelings, other people's, if you took everybody's feelings into consideration, would you even be living your own life? But you're, I mean, okay, to play devil's advocate, because yes, I, I feel that that can be a... You know, oh, this, this, this is a fun conversation. So if you're coming into where they're doing business, they didn't invite that, right? This is, they're here, and a lot of them, not because they choose to be, like you said, but because they, mm-hmm. it's a necessity in their life. And it's, they're not asking you to validate whether or not their feelings should be taken into consideration you can put yourself here right you know, and, 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 and you've heard me do that and you're kind of making that decision for them um i don't think i'm making that decision for them again because none of us have a right to privacy in public there there is no privacy in public if if you want privacy in public you're what the courts have said is you need to go to your own private space and ensure you have your own privacy away from the public space. Um, So when when you've got people out here doing their business, um, trying to solve their life problems, make their lives better, if if there is something that's 100% private, they should be in a separate room locked away. For example, uh, that that person there and that person there are sitting very close to each other. They can probably hear every word that's going on between both of their cases. So, so there is no this, privacy there. People say there's a security number out loud, so already there's private information. Exactly. So that that's a security flaw in your system because again, if if you go back to if you, if we get away from feelings because feelings are all over the place out there in the world today, and we just go to what the law says because without law this building wouldn't even exist. Without government that collects taxes, this building wouldn't exist. Without our constitution, none of the government wouldn't be what it is, nothing would be what it is, this job wouldn't be, the building wouldn't be in the same form that it is now. So if we don't take our our, our supreme constitutional rights above all, especially feelings, we've got anarchy in society, if we just let feelings rule over the Constitution laws, that is anarchy, isn't it? I'm not dis- I, I understand what you're saying, and at the same time, I, I do stand by... Oh, I, I, you're protecting your people. I get yes. it. That's your, that's your job. This is my job. I, 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 th- this is going well. This will play great. You're, you're doing a good job. I appreciate you. You really are. <laughs> this is not how, exactly how I was looking for our Friday afternoon ticket. No, I'm but, sure it wasn't. Um, but it's probably a lot more interesting than it would have been otherwise. You know, um, I, but ultimately, I, I do say my, my goal is to make people feel comfortable when they're coming yeah. to apply for assistance and um, you know, be respectful of them and not have them feel like their you know, identity is at risk. Oh, and, and I understand what you're saying and I hear what you're saying about okay. I can appreciate someone pointing out you know, ways to be more secure mm-hmm. in the information. Um, I could argue that one way to be more secure is to not have someone filming our customers and the information that they're uh, sharing while they're in the office. Uh, but how, but then what you got to do to change that is you got to go to the courts because the courts have said this is a constitutionally protected activity. And so maybe that's one of the problems we have in our world right now is instead of our legislators legislating law and making laws and rules for us, We've let our courts take over that and do laws. Whichever side of Roe versus Wade you on or are on or off, I don't let's not go there. But Roe versus Wade is the perfect example of that. The courts made a law. Our legislature never did anything about it. The state of Nevada did. We've we've legalized it here for under certain circumstances. But that's my point is one day the Supreme Court said you could do something, the next day the Supreme Court said you couldn't do something, and the people, we, you and I, we didn't vote for those people, we didn't put them in their chairs, we never put them there. Our legislator, on the other hand, 
shouldn't they have made laws to either allow abortion like they did in Nevada or disallow, but since the court said you can't do it, the only thing that could have changed that was the federal government, and they didn't do it either. So that's the problem in our system, is we've, we've allowed our system to be usurped, where the courts are making laws, not the legislatures, and society is confused. So if we want to overturn this with what you're saying, and like I said, I've, I've been to the legislature, I've been a lobbyist, and I've helped write laws and got them passed. It was, I was amazed. I'm just some dude off the street that figured the system out. So how do we fix your problem here? Because the law says I can do this. And I'm sure you've heard about First Amendment auditors. Has the state trained you about those? Um, so it's, it's not a specific training. I am uh, aware of that, but uh, it's... I, in my 16 years of working here, I have not had anyone ever come into my office mm -hmm. and insist that they have a right to film everybody here. And no, uh, nobody has stood up for their rights yet. Well, but again, I argue, you know, you're, oh, no. you're standing up for your rights, but I, at the same time, I see it as an infringement upon all of our customers here, and I, yeah. and and the purpose behind it, you know, what's to be gained and the value of that, you know, you standing up for the rights, and then well, but at the same time, um, in violation of you know, the, the confidentiality of customers. You know, well, it's, I, in my mind, I always go back to the argument of, I, I understand that making change can sometimes be uncomfortable and can, you know, it can create waves, but I don't see the necessity in a scenario like this, where I, I want to stand behind you and your ability to, to legislate and advocate for, you know, your rights uh, and to, you know, stand up for those and to act accordingly. And at the same time, I just don't, I, I don't agree that it should be happening at the at the cost of the, the comfort and dignity of the individuals that are applying for assistance here. Yeah, uh, I find it to be just, it's just as a shame. Mm -hmm. And it's really frustrating to not be able to, uh, to express that and have that respected yeah. um, in, in our office. Yeah, no, I, I, I like I said, I, I see exactly where you're coming from. I can only respect you for trying to protect the people that you serve. Um, but but again, public space, not private. Should the state of Nevada do something to solve the problem that I'm highlighting here today? And you're saying the problem is that it, people are able to come into here and film. That is the problem. Well, well, what? well. If your problem is you don't want, and I'm not going to turn my camera this Please, direction. Um, so you don't want that human being there or the human being down at the end of that desk, or the other people over there, they don't want to have their face seen or their personal information heard. But we, we, we both heard, or, or I don't know if I heard it, you, you said that somebody's saying their social security number over there and everybody in this room can hear it. Now, if you get somebody with uh, you know, a, a memory where they're gonna memorize every single thing and they're just sitting there in that, that chair listening, that's a problem. I, right, and at the same time, this is probably the closest that we've come to actually having someone actively... Showing you the problem. Uh, well, Be Because if, if they were sitting there getting that chair, taking social security numbers, and they went home and just did identi identity theft, right? Because that's the real issue there. You, how would you ever know that that's where they got the information from? I, and I, I completely understand. I, I understand that someone who has a, a nefarious, you know, intent and is doing so in a much less uh, obvious way. Obvious way that that is entirely possible. And, and would would you would you agree? You said 16 years. So in the last 16 years, was there probably somebody that came into your office that had a nefarious intent to gather information and do something with it? That you never knew about. I mean, I, I certainly is that could, possible? I could never say that it's impossible. I, I couldn't say that. Right. So that what I'm saying by doing this, by exercising my constitutional right that makes people uncomfortable, I'm highlighting the whole problem. So, so maybe the state of Nevada. And I did this to the DMV the other day. I went into DMV and they got mad because they had their computer screens turned, so I could record their computer screens at DMV. There's a federal law against them sharing that information, but they were all out there, so I could see it. And, and, and they're trying to go, you can't record this stuff. And I'm going, no, you guys need to turn your computer screens around and put your stuff on there. It's not my job to protect everybody else's privacy. Oh, good, the Capitol Police are here, or the Highway Patrol. Yeah. Um, so so that's, that, that's, that's what I'm saying is fix the problems as opposed to blaming people's rights. 
I wish that there was a way, Drew, to bring that up as a concern mm -hmm. without actively being the part of that. So could you bring it up and fix that problem? So I, I wholly believe if uh, someone were to come in here and make these observations and write it up as opposed to recording and, and, and say, these are, this is, these are issues that I observed, I absolutely stand by trying to have those rectified and by lobbying or doing whatever it takes to make people hear that. I, and just, it really is frustrating to have it actively happening. The thing that you're saying needs to be fixed to have that actually happening. And I, I get it, I get it. I can, I, I understand, Drew. So, so, I'm going to go back to, I'm, I'm going to give you a little bit, and I'll tell you my channel here, and you can go look at it when I'm done with all this. And you'll see, you'll, you'll see the impetus of why I started this. It's because of governmental abuse directly to me, governmental threats to me that violated my constitutional rights. And like I told you, I have a history of doing other things, and I'm going, I don't like what this man did. I don't see a way that I'm going to get any justice unless I go to federal court. And how can I make how how can I make change? How how can I fix things? How can I solve the problem? Oops. Absolutely. Hello, sir. What's your name? My name is Drew. What's your name? Drew. My what? name is Trooper Tyler, the Highway Patrol. Trooper, Trooper what? Let me, let me get you. Let me get you here. Well, I'd like to stay here for a moment. Why is that? Um, what was your name again? It's Trooper Ty. And your badge number, please. It's 238. Thank you, sir. And your name and badge number, please, sir. Are you a supervisor? I am a supervisor. Let's go. Stay right there. Make sure you're at. Now, am I being detained, sir? Right now, yes. Okay. Stay right there. Thank you. I'm Trooper Krause, 637. Hi, Trooper. Okay. How are you? I'm good. Where are you from? Oh, around here. That's cool. Twist it around there. So if I showed you a video of a cop violating my Fourth Amendment constitutional rights, what action would you take? I don't know the answer to that. Would, would, would you investigate or would you just leave it alone and let it die? Like I said, I'm not going to answer any of your questions. I appreciate that. Yeah, no worries. Because, well, I don't know if the answer could be good for you on either side of it. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty messed up way for it to go, isn't it? What did you say your name was? My name is Drew. Do you have an ID on you, Drew? I'm not going to provide ID unless you've got probable, co a reasonable suspicion. Okay, so here's your choices. You can leave on okay. your own accord. Right. Okay. The supervisor of the building doesn't want you in here anymore. You cannot be filming in here. Okay. Or I can take you out of here. Okay. It's up to you. Well, here, so let me let me let me get this straight. So is it under a threat of violence or arrest that you will remove me from the building? Yes. So yes. yes. Okay. So you're you're violating my constitutional right under the color of law. Title 18. I believe it's USC 240. 241 is conspiracy. That's the criminal violation you're making right now. Uh, title 42 USC, is it 1395? That's the civil violation you're making right now. Do you want to continue with that? I will leave at your direction. Yes, leave. Okay, thank you. So there was, to be clear, there was no 